If you want to get a data science job, especially on product marketing or growth teams, you are going to probably need to know causal inference methods for the case study round in your interview. And this is because one of the most common case study questions is to for you to evaluate what the impact is of a feature launch or a new advertising campaign. So today we're going to talk about one of the models, which is the interrupted time series. Now this model is not used that often in tech um, because it's a fairly niche case, but it is really important to know in case these business questions come up. So first of all, you need to have time series data. The treatment that is in question, such as the feature launch or the marketing campaign has to affect the entire population, or at least there is no reasonable comparison group that is left untreated. And this population at some point goes from treated to untreated. So you have a population of users and maybe it has a conversion rate like every week or every month, or it has visit rates, or it has time spent on the site. And you can measure this every day, every week, every month. And then at some point, there's some treatment that affects the entire group. Now, when you go to model the interrupted time series, it's important that you think about how the treatment is going to affect the population. In one example, it could cause just a level shift. So the population, whatever it, it is, continues on the trend that it was going. And then once the treatment happens, there's a bump up, but then it continues on that regular trend. So maybe you have a platform and you're just continuously growing, you know, a revenue is growing at a very consistent rate. And then something happens, you get a new bunch of users in and they don't affect the growth rate, but it's just like a sudden shock. But then there are other cases where your treatment may cause a trend shift. So in this case, the gray line is what indicates the trend that this population was on. And then the treatment happens and now it's on a higher or lower trajectory. And then if you can have one or the other, of course, you can have both. So there might be a level shift and there might be a trend shift that happens at the same time. Now, one thing you have to be really careful about here is extra extrapolation, especially thinking way too far out in the future. So in this interrupted time series, this gray line, which represents what we think the population would have done without the treatment, the gap between that and the orange line, what did actually happen, we refer to as the treatment effect. And if we actually plot out that treatment effect, you can see it's of course zero, zero, zero leading up to the event, it jumps, that's the level shift, and then it just continues to grow over time due to the trend shift. Now, in some cases, this might be absolutely ridiculous if you think too far out. Imagine this model thinking about conversion rates. If you were to extrapolate this too far out into the future, you might end up having a prediction for conversion rates that are over 100%, which is obviously a nonsensical model. So here's a concrete example of how this could be used. Imagine you're a company like an Uber or an Amazon or Airbnb, and suppose you had a quiet launch into a new country for the first time. So let's say it was the first time you were ever going international and you launch in Brazil, but you have a, a quiet launch and you don't really do any marketing. And over the first year, there is some steady growth just through word of mouth. And then you decide to do like a big marketing, like brand marketing ad blitz in that region to drive awareness. If we want to know what the impact of that is, we have to take into account that there might have been some steady growth that was already occurring naturally, even without the brand marketing. We want to be able to net that out and then measure the actual incremental effect of the marketing. And of course, if these companies had already been in other countries in that region, you would probably want to use them as comparison groups and say like a synthetic control or difference and differences. But if it's the only country that's available in that region and you really have no other comps at all, you might want to think about interrupted time series.